Yeah, you can just grab my blue bag and your green bag for now, and then we can come back and get that stuff if you need it.
we just had a nurse switch and our nurse is really nice. The anesthesiologist, they just had like a shift change so it got put behind so I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for the epidural. Um, I did want to say that before you use the epidural, when you go to the bathroom to pee, it's like if you're having a contraction at the same time and you try to pee, it's like the most painful thing ever. So I can't imagine like pushing with this type of pain. Like I can't. I don't know if I could do it because just sitting on the toilet to pee is like excruciating. I just got my epidural and um, I'm not going to lie to you. It was a little difficult. They put the local anesthesia in and it's a pretty big sting. It like took my breath away actually. I think I made a whimper and then they punch the tube into you which you can't feel pain but you can feel pressure and then you can feel the medicine start going in but I feel like day and night better than I did before I had it so I think that it's more than worth it to have the epidural done because once the initial pain is over like it's seriously day and night like I haven't felt relaxed like this in I don't even know how long so I have I do have a button next to me right there that button I can push it any time if I'm feeling pain so I don't plan on pushing it loosely but it's there if I need it my doctor is on her way in to do a balloon dilation for my cervix so we'll see how that goes my doctor came and put a balloon in my cervix to help me dilate she said I'm between one and two centimeters right now and that the nurse will come in periodically and see if, like kind of tug on the balloon and see if it comes out to know when I've dilated more. I also put a catheter in, which is not very nice, but that's what's going on now, and they're about to give me another bag of penicillin. I've already had two doses so far of my antibiotics, so we're good to go on. I'm having cranberry juice cocktail, because this is all I can have until she's born. I have a little bit of nausea coming on, honey. advice if you're a first time mom the second that you start feeling nausea ask to get the Zofran and get a bag like this because I literally had just gotten off the phone with her to ask for Zofran when I started throwing up so don't like wait it out or anything because you'll probably vomit <laughs> ask right away 
she said that about 85% of women do throw up during labor because it's just a part of the body's natural response to laboring. Okay, it is exactly 11 o'clock right now and we are starting Pitocin because my contractions were coming about a minute apart and now they are becoming more irregular. I still have the balloon in my cervix but they went ahead and started the Pitocin so I think things are about to get real. I just wanted to say I'm so glad that I didn't wait to get the epidural. Like, I'm glad that I got it right away because I didn't have to feel her putting the balloon in me. I didn't have to feel pain when I was projectile vomiting. And now they've already started the Pitocin. So I got the epidural basically as soon as they would give it to me because my doctor said I could get it as early as one centimeter if I wanted to. And I was around two centimeters when I got it. So my advice to you guys, if you're going to have an epidural, to get it literally as soon as possible. Plus, once I asked for it, it took like an hour after I even asked for the epidural for them to get here. So if you wait until you're in a lot of pain, the epidural might not get to you and you might have an hour of excruciating pain, possibly vomiting, and it's just not worth it, so get it quickly. Also, I've heard some people say that the epidural only works on one side of their body, and the nurse just told me that if that happens to me, that I can roll to that side of my body and then push my button for more medicine. And like if my left side is in pain, roll onto your left side and push the button and that will help it because it's gravity based. So the nurse just came in, isn't this cute? She told me that my oxygen levels were at a 94% and they need to be at at least a 96%. Um, so they had to put this oxygen in for me to breathe. I'll probably have it in for, I'm assuming for the rest of the time. So very interesting. It's like, it's basically just pumping oxygen into my nose, which is crazy, but she said that it's common for some women's oxygen level to be at a 94%, 93, 94, because there's not enough room for her, um, your lungs to really breathe in the oxygen that you need, so you kind of teach yourself to basically take, not take a deep of breath. So she said it's normal, it's nothing to worry about, but I get to wear this fancy ooh, accessory. So the nurse, um, my stepsister just texted me and said that I need to put these over my ears. And I didn't know that. <laughs> the nurse didn't tell me, so I'm gonna get it on correctly now. How you feeling, babe? Not that good. Do you want to tell them what happened when the doctor came in? Well, so the doctor came in and she was about two, or she was about five uh, mm -hmm. centimeters dilated. Mm -hmm. So, and 80% deface and the e faced, and the baby was minus two. Mm -hmm. uh, so, doc broke Aaron's water. And they started the, ep what's it called? She broke my water and then Taylor started getting distressed. Well, yeah, just because they just had to roll her over to her side and try a different, couple of different sides. So. They stopped, they stopped the Pitocin. And they stopped the Pitocin since Skyla's doesn't have the swimming pool that she was used to. She's wondering what the hell's going on. We're ruining her day. Yeah, so they put oxygen on me and I think oxygen on for Skyla. And uh, I can feel my contractions, so I had to push the button like three times. And the anesthesiologist is coming back. Skyla should be here. She said about a centimeter every hour, so maybe within five hours if we're lucky. She's ready to get out of there. She's swimming in an empty swimming pool right now. Yep, everything's back to normal. I think once you rolled over on this side, she was a lot more comfortable. Erin likes to hang on to this bar instead of hanging on to my hand when she has contractions. <laughs> Show them what you do when you have a contraction. I'm like this. 
see them right there at the bottom those mountains those are contractions and they do not feel anything like the pain that I was feeling a couple minutes ago so I'm glad that I called the anesthesiologist back in so don't be afraid to tell them that you need the anesthesiologist to give you more or whatever because I even have a button and I push the button every 15 minutes and it still wasn't enough for me I'm having nausea again so I just had them put some more Zofran in my um, IV and I have seriously given myself so many doses of epidural that I am, I can't like feel my body, I can't move my legs at this point so now I'm like kind of shaking and I just don't feel good, <laughs> I feel really sick like I'm going to throw up. So we have a, she 
said we have about 20 minutes? Yeah. So okay. She's gonna come back at 545 um, and see if you're able to push. Okay. If not, then she'll let you call laboring down to allow her to come down a little bit more. Okay. We usually don't start pushing until she's about plus two to plus three. Okay. Um, especially with first time moms, because you can actually push her up to three hours. Yeah, so we're trying to avoid that. So okay. the more that she push can. Push a little bit. Yeah. If she can't, if she if she isn't like if the baby isn't coming down, then it's kind of pointless of pushing because then you will be pushing about three hours. Okay. So she pushes maybe for about thirty minutes to an hour. Okay. Just to see how you do, and if it's not really making a lot of progress, then the um the baby can down. So. Okay. Am I just completely wide out in the open whole time like this? Okay, we're not gonna do the GoPro. <laughs> we'll just do this. Oh my god. Let's start to handle, okay? Okay. So I want you to take a nice deep breath. Chin to your chest. Chest up. And push into your breath. Hold your breath. And push. Hold your breath and push like you're having a bounce. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good. Now we can do it again. Look at 
at your little outfit. <laughs> You're so cute, huh? You're so cute. Hi. Hi, Daddy. I just got out of the shower. Kayla just got her bath. Hi, guys. Skyla has not even been in the world for 24 hours yet. Nick is with me. So I wanted to take a minute to tell you guys a couple of things. It was the most beautiful experience of my life, and I'll go into that in my labor and delivery story. But I did have some second degree tearing. I think it was about four or five stitches. Skyla latched on immediately, right when she was born. She, after, they didn't, I didn't get to hold her right away because she had amniotic fluid in her lungs. get to hold her, they put her on me right away, and she latched instantly. She has been so good at latching on, and she's just a natural. Since this is like the second 12 hours of her life, she's been very tired, and since she's had amniotic fluid in her lungs, it's, she's too, been a little bit too tired and a little fe feeling full because of the fluid that she hasn't wanted to feed as much, but they've assured me that that's very normal. I've been extremely exhausted, but I can't sleep, and it's funny because everybody always says like, oh, you need to rest, get as much rest as you can, rest, 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 but it's such an exciting time, like, having Skyla here that I'm, my adrenaline is still pumping, and I'm still in this space where I'm like super alert, even though I'm super tired, and so this has been like the most exhausting couple days of my life, but... It was just impossible for me to get rest leading up to the birth because, you know, I came in on Monday night at 10 p.m. and then I gave birth to her the following evening, which was Tuesday evening at 6.23, and I didn't really sleep at all. I got maybe a couple of little naps in, but nothing like what I would like to have had because I was just so excited and it's just such a whirlwind of emotions. It's so hard to get any rest. sure that her blood sugar wasn't low and you know they need to make sure that she keeps her blood sugar up because she's such a I mean technically she's a heavy weight according to the doctors and she did three blood tests and they all came back good so we're good there we're cleared and she's had all of her like shots and um, her vaccinations and her vitamin K drops and all that stuff with all the way only thing that we have left is she has to be has a hearing test today tonight I think and then there's one other thing but it's something really simple and I don't remember what it is but this is day two and it's 12 50 p.m. next sleeping and we're just laying here in the third we're just on cloud nine and we get to go home tomorrow so we we're gonna have to spend a total of three nights we get to go home tomorrow afternoon as long as everything is looking good. Hi Angel. We love you so much. I just fully eat my pants. Are we gonna go on a walk? First walk. <laughs> Hi, Skyla. We get to go home today. You get to meet Zell and Duchess today. <laughs> you excited? We're so happy to bring you home. This is your going home outfit. Look how pretty you are. Yeah? 
Look at you. Look at those cute little toes. Look at those cute little toes. You're beautiful, Skylar. We can't wait to take you home. bud and leggings and stuff just to give her a break because when they're brand new they just really don't like you know Should getting having all that stuff get on a baby on board sticker no <laughs> how about the tree family no we're not getting a stick figure family honey <laughs> how do you feel babe tight the car seat needs to be because I, I did it wrong and that stressed me out and then we got home and animals and like um, my mom is here and my mother-in-law and it just made me feel like for some reason it just got me really emotional so I came in my room for a little bit and I cried for a while like pretty intense crying and it's just hormones and I feel like they're leveling out now I feel better now Skyla's nursing really well and it was just kind of a dramatic couple of hours, but I think we're okay now. And having contractions while she's nursing, because I don't know if I've talked about this on here before, but when you're nursing, your uterus contracts and it can be really painful. Last night it was so painful that I had the shakes. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that this was a helpful little vlog, and I appreciate you guys following our journey up until here. Gala is absolutely perfect. We couldn't have had a better experience at the hospital with birth. Please give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel and I will 